So this tool is TED's 10, the 10 as we call it now. Um, and uh, it came about after many, many years of research actually. It was uh, when we set up our first group, TED, Textiles Environment Design, in 1996. Our ambition was to create design strategies to help textile and fashion designers really understand all the different decisions that were involved in making uh, textiles and uh, textiles of fashion in particular. Uh, and if you could understand all of those decisions, then you would have control over some of them but, and, and make them in the best way that you could. So we were sort of years ago really driven by this idea that 80 to 90% of a product's impact is decided at the design stage. And we know now that this is a kind of a fluctuating percentage based on what kind of designer you are and what kind of organization you are working in and what kind of product you're making. But even so, if it's not 80 to 90%, it's somewhere in the region of 50% upwards. Um, of course, if you own your own company um, and you're an entrepreneur, a, a startup, and you're manufacturing right across um, a supply chain that you manage, then it's likely that your decision making process applies, um, can actually create the impacts, you know, in the region of 90, 100%. So we really wanted to drill down and map really all the decisions that would go on for a designer and and then to use this kind of framework that we came up with to not just to sort of checklist that we were making the best decisions but also start to understand where some decisions could actually be worked around and we could start to question really the whole status quo around the products we're making and this sort of bearing in mind we we were researching from 96 and then we brought out the first set of strategies um, as a set of seven originally uh, which became 10 in 2010. Uh, we kind of have been evolving them and changing them and, and exploring them over quite a long period of time and we've been able to help many 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 students but many companies as well understand where the future is uh, where they're currently close to, to making good gains in terms of sustainability but also where the hot spots are for them and and really to understand in a sense the broadest sense of sustainable design before they can then understand which decisions are within their power and therefore which of those they can change and and how quickly they can change too um, some of their, there are some more tools that go with TED, TED's 10 which really help to shape the whole picture and I'll introduce those one at a time as well over other films um, but first I just want to take you through the 10 so you can download the PDF of the cards from the Textile Toolbox website and you can also watch an animation for each of the 10 and I really recommend that you do that because that uh, those have been very carefully scripted, very short animations are around two minutes each and they really sum up very very well um, the intention of that strategy. So you can order these as well as a pack um, or simply download your own and make your own set. The latest edition, which is version three, comes with a little instruction on uh, a little description and instruction on how you might play with them. And I'm going to go through different ways to play in another film. Um, but for now, I just want to show you each of these. So strategy number one, design to minimize waste. So right from the outset, do I really need to make it? Is it Am I just actually producing more waste? How can I reduce waste right from the outset with this product? What, how can I either zero waste pattern cut or find ways to use all the kind of byproducts and offcuts? Can I look at the product I'm making and make different decisions to reduce the amount of waste that it's putting in to culture? Secondly, design for cyclability. 
And this has become an incredibly important card uh, and a lot of our work really when we, we started out as um, textiles environment design and we changed our research center to center for circular design in 2017 um, because so much of our work now is around cyclability and circular economy so design for cyclability is making the product um, recyclable future cyclability um, if you're going to put it into the world, you've got to make sure it can be reprocessed. And before it can be reprocessed, reused, remanufactured, before it goes into regeneration. So design for cyclability. Design to reduce chemical impacts. This is very much about being aware of the ingredients that go into your product and spotting in particular where you are using harmful chemicals. Um, maybe it's a waterproofing that goes on the material. Maybe it's a particular kind of dye, like a, a bright fluorescent dye. You've got to really understand when you specify for your product, when you're designing it, what chemical impacts are you implying? Designed to reduce energy and water use getting slightly more nuanced here, but you really have to understand the energy implications of the materials and the processes of the product that you're making, not just during its design and production, but also during its use phase, as well as its disposal phase. Be aware of how much water goes into each stage of the product and how much energy is used as well. And designed to reduce energy and water isn't just about materials use, it's also about designing things that can be, for example, low laundered. Design that explores cleaner slash better technologies. This is really making sure that you're totally on top of the research of the new um, developments that are coming through from technology and from the sciences as you're designing a product, as you want it to look or feel or perform in a certain way, are you achieving that using the best kind of technology? Or are you simply using what's always been used? So an example might be um, using the laser to finish denim instead of using bleach processes or scouring processes. So those are the first five and they are really the product level um, strategies. If you do, if you go through a thought process with each of those five, you'll really be refining your product in terms of its material properties and its sort of performance as a made object. But there are the, the next five um, are slightly different. They take on more of a, a systems perspective, and they also consider um, new business models. Um, as well as the sort of genesis of the idea itself. So design that takes models from nature and culture is really about understanding and thinking about the modern world that we're in and are we making products in the right way uh, for the right things? Are these relevant? Have we gone too far forward in a funny sense? Like why are we even making clothes this way? Um, challenge ourselves to think about the implications of the product that we're making and how it fits into culture and maybe how it fits into you know the, the history of clothing we haven't always had affluence and indeed after a moment like this in history where we're under the greatest economic crisis since the second world war it might be that we don't have clothes and fashion in the same way afterwards so what can we learn from pre-abundance um, eras and how can we sort of bring those ideas up to date and make them relevant and desirable and attractive now. Design for ethical production. Being aware of who is making your product. As you design and you make your, you specify your product, what do you know about the factories that are making uh, your raw materials, your secondary materials, or making the product that you are specifying? What kind of standards, um, what kind of uh, legislation is your company uh, buying into? And you know, what if you're designing at the outset, 
why use that factory in the first place? Have you looked for a different kind of factory? Maybe your product could be made through a social innovation project instead of um, uh, a mass production factory. Are there ways for you to innovate as a designer with the product itself in such a way that supports a new kind of manufacturing and production process that maybe works at a, a community level, at a social innovation level? Design to reduce the need to consume. An oxymoron, really. If we're trying to make money as designers and we're trying to run businesses, why would be, we be trying to consciously reduce consumption? But this card is really one of my favorites because it's very much a thinking about fashion, not as a product and something you buy off the shelf, but as the service and the pleasure that it gives us. So if we are going to you know, dress up and um, go out, then why can't we like borrow clothes? Why can't we um, find ways to swap or share? Why do we have to consume new? Um, we can actually find ways to connect with people and build the experience um, of being together into how we, how we look and how we dress. Can we encourage each other not to buy new, but to, to swap and share our resources? Something that might be even more critical in the economic climate that we're in now. Dematerializing systems and services. And this takes this a little bit further. Dematerialize really means to question the amount of resources and materials going into the product in the first place. So you're kind of reducing straight away by saying, does it even need to exist? Would people perhaps be satisfied by having an avatar and having virtual clothing and changes of wardrobes? There's a huge world of services out there that I think the fashion industry has barely scratched the surface with really. But fashion and clothing and textiles, they're all about pleasure. We don't have to own or buy new to experience that pleasure. So beyond designing the product, what services and systems can you build to either replace the product so you don't use raw materials or, or any resources? Or if you're bringing a product out to the market, how can you support it and heighten its, its use and value by introducing systems and services around that product. And finally, design activism. It is my favorite because design activism is about using the power of design to create change. And to be an activist means to be a change maker. So by making a product, by exploring and discovering new ideas and new ideologies, how can you improve the lives of others and how can you improve the culture and society that we live in? Um, and really 10, maybe 10 underpins all of these other strategies in some way. Maybe we're asking designers to really now approach the, the future as, as activists, activists for change. Um, and maybe Ted's 10 can help with imagining our new futures.